Hello and welcome to the Lake Mead and Hoover Dam update for January 2024. The water level at the Lake Mead Reservoir is currently 1,070 feet 9 inches. That's an increase of 3 feet 4 inches from our last update. In fact, the water level has not been this high since the summer of 2021. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. In today's episode, we're reviewing Lake Mead's current water level statistics. Next up, we're investigating unusual fluctuation in water levels at Lake Mead, a vital lifeline for 40 million people across the American Southwest. Why is this happening, and what does it mean for the future of the Lake Mead Reservoir? Are we heading towards another year of record low water levels? Next up, we'll head 24 miles southwest of Lake Mead to the city of Las Vegas, where top water officials of the seven Colorado River Basin states are working to create a new plan for managing our nation's largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. This is going to be a fun episode, so stay tuned, hit that like button. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. Lake Mead is starting out 2024 with significant gains in water level. Despite that, the current elevation of 1,070 feet is still below the 1,153-foot average elevation for mid-January. The highest water level at Lake Mead was recorded on July 24, 1983, at 1,225 feet. The record low elevation was set on July 28, 2022, when the water level dropped to just 1,040 feet, 7 inches. Lake Mead's full pool capacity is 28.2 million acre-feet. The average capacity for this state is 18,092,000 acre-feet. The current capacity of the Lake Mead Reservoir is 9,261,000 acre-feet, which is 51.2% of the average capacity for this state. The record low was set on July of 2022, when the capacity dropped to just 7,018,000 acre-feet. Even with a terrific start to the water year, the Lake Mead Reservoir is only at 35.46% of full pool capacity. As I mentioned earlier, water levels at Lake Mead have increased over 3 feet since our last update in December. Here is a chart of the 2024 water year, which began on October 1, 2023. As you can see, the water level started to increase dramatically on December 1st, and that water level continues to increase today. This is unusual. Lake Mead's water levels typically remain flat during the winter months. Let's take a look at a chart of the 2023 water year as a comparison. The 2023 water year was terrific, with water levels gaining over 20 feet in elevation. But that increase happened between late April and September. This is typical behavior for Lake Mead. As spring approaches, the temperatures increase, and the snowpack in the upper Colorado River Basin begins to melt. This snowmelt leads to increased inflows to Lake Mead and the rise of water levels. But from November to April, the water level remained flat. That's because any precipitation that falls during winter arrives in the form of snow. That snow will remain trapped in the mountain areas of the upper basin until temperatures start to rise again. Now let's take a look at the 2022 water year. Again, we see the same thing. The water level in the winter months remained flat. What makes this chart unusual is the massive decline from spring and through the summer months. That's because the 2022 snowpack was just non-existent. There was no snow to melt and therefore nothing to fill up Lake Mead. So where am I going with all of this? Well, let's see that chart for the 2024 water year again. This increase in water levels in December and January is very unusual. From December 1st to today, Lake Mead has gained about six feet in elevation. That's an increase of 462,000 acre feet. So why is this happening? Why such a big increase when water levels are typically flat during winter? Well, I guess Lake Mead is just having a terrific year. Maybe we should celebrate. Or maybe we should dig a little deeper to see what's really going on. To understand water levels at Lake Mead, we need to look upstream to the Glen Canyon Dam and its reservoir, Lake Powell. Here is a chart of Lake Powell's water level for the 2024 water year. 
As you can see, Lake Powell has lost seven and a half feet in elevation since the beginning of the water year on October 1st, 2023. Since December 1st, the Lake Powell Reservoir has lost over 563,000 acre feet. So while the headlines may read that Lake Mead's water level is on the rise and it's doing great, it's at the expense of the upstream reservoir, Lake Powell. To get a true picture of how things are going, let's take a look at the entire Colorado River storage system. This is a chart that shows the water levels for the 2024 water year for all of the reservoirs along the Colorado River combined. This chart gives us the true situation. The Colorado River system has lost a lot of water so far this water year. In fact, all of the reservoirs combined have lost over 446,000 acre feet since the beginning of the water year on October 1st. So when you see these headlines about Lake Mead's water level recovering, be skeptical. It's easy to manipulate water levels in the Colorado River system. If you want water levels at Lake Mead to look good, increase releases from Navajo, Flaming Gorge, Powell, or any of the other reservoirs and you get the results you want. If you really want to understand the water situation in the Southwest, look at the entire system capacity. The rules that have guided Colorado River operations for two decades will expire at the end of 2026. Water negotiators across the West are working to create a new set of guidelines called post-2026 operations. This new set of guidelines will, hopefully, address the overallocation and mismanagement that have caused reservoirs like Lake Mead and Lake Powell to reach record low water levels. Initially, negotiators thought they would have until the end of 2024 to submit their plan. Now, however, Reclamation would like the plan delivered by the end of March of this year in less than three months. If negotiators fail to deliver a plan, Reclamation will move forward with their own plan. In fact, according to the Bureau of Reclamation, even if the Colorado River Basin states get their plan submitted in time, that does not guarantee that federal officials will approve their plan. Reclamation could accept their plan wholesale, but the agency can also pick and choose different parts of the plan to approve at their own discretion. No matter what the Basin states agree on, the ultimate decision on the post-2026 operations lies with the Bureau of Reclamation. Now, there are some rumors going around, including this article from the New York Times, that this shortened timeline is to make sure the new plan is approved before Inauguration Day in January 2025. The theory being that if there's a change in administration, there could be a change in how all of this works, slowing down the negotiation process. However, to one negotiator from Utah, the shortened timeline is to allow Reclamation the time they need to write the environmental impact statement that's due by the end of 2024. This shortened timeline means things are going to get very exciting over the next few months. But rest assured, I'm on top of the situation. That's all I have for this episode. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.